So we're on episode 8 of Big Brother 26, and I know that this review is coming so late. Apologies. I hope some people watch it at least. Even though it's only, the episode was on, premiered less than 24 hours ago, but like you, I feel like you gotta be quick with these reviews. The longer it takes you to put out a review, the less people watch it. That's just how I personally feel and what I see. But this episode kicks off with the aftermath of the veto ceremony where Kenny used the veto on himself and Chelsea decided to put up Tucker because Tucker volunteered. Tucker volunteered because the whole house pretty much hates Lisa and Angela. So like, no matter what, one of those two will be the one evicted, no matter if he's sitting next to one of them or if he doesn't, if it's those two on the block. And, like, this is where, like, I said in my last review that this season is kind of, it's good, it's great, I love it, but it's like the next few weeks are so predictable because if 90% of the people win HOH, we got to get rid of Kenny, we got to get rid of Angela, we got to get rid of Lisa. Once those three are gone, then I feel like, It'll pick up, but those three need to leave in order for us to get new nominees and pretty much like new alliances. Because right now we're on a whole house alliance where everyone has decided that those three, Kenny, Angela, and Lisa, are the house nominations until they're gone. So we see Lisa pretty much annoying every single person in the house. Tucker still complaining about her, and I honestly think it's ridiculous. At this point, I'm tired of everybody talking about Lisa and. I don't think she's that bad. I think the glitter stuff was annoying, and they should have told her. Like, you, like I would, but they're all. It, it's hard because they all just met her. But me personally, if with, with one of my friends, like if someone, if they're doing something wrong that people don't like, I tell them. So like I, I don't know. In the house, I guess she didn't have like a real number one like at all. Like, I, I, was it Lisa or was it Angela at one point, and then they just completely fell out. Like Angela's falling out with everybody. That was her number one. So I guess. Remember BB guns? <laughs> so we see a bathroom scene where Lisa says that, the, remember, the powers are still in play, guys. And then we see Tucker go on a rant about how he thinks Lisa has the powers. And he talks all around the house about Lisa having the power, yada, yada. We know you don't like her. Get her name out your mouth. She's going home this week, most likely. So then Tucker decides to meet with Lisa, where it's just those two talking on, like, a balcony outside, it looked like. It was so awkward. Like, he was just telling her, like, I know you got the power, and if you say you don't, you're lying. And she's like, I don't. And it was it was just extremely awkward. And, like, she said she don't, and he was like, oh, well, I know you're lying. And he, she was like, I don't. And he thinks that she was the vote, which he is right about. She kept denying, 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 which, I mean, shoot, it's the hot, it's Big Brother. She don't have to tell about the vote. I, I respect her for lying about the vote, honestly. Deny, deny, deny. She seemed like she actually knows how to play the game. So then Tucker decides to say, oh, I, I studied psychology for however much time. And she's like, okay, like, I study sociology. And he immediately, like, shut her down and was like, that's cute. I studied for the, I worked for the CIA. Like, oh my God, like, calm down. I feel like he was just a little bit too, like, boom, boom. Like, I don't know. It was just, it was awkward. It was awkward as hell. Then from one awkward scene to another, also involved involve in Tucker, like, Tucker was all over this episode. Tucker meets with Angela outside, and they start talking about, like, Angela's, like, making sure, like, she was campaigning to stay, and she starts talking crap. Well, not really talking crap, but kind of talking about Quinn and she hopes that she don't go home because of that and Quinn did walk outside with I think Cam and they started playing pool and I mean like big ups to Angela <laughs> she didn't care she kept talking and she was talking about Quinn and Quinn kind of picked up on it and he was getting upset like you could see him like make faces like like he wants to say something but he's like no I just feel like Quinn really ruined his own game like I don't know he really could have been a great player I mean he still could but, like, I don't know. It's weird. From one awkward scene to another awkward scene to a third awkward scene, we see a group of people talking inside of a bedroom. I forgot who all was in there. It was Tucker. It was Lisa. And, uh, I think Rubina was in there. And I was like, hey, Rubina, you still exist. Because I was starting to think, like, we were inside the Mandela effect, and she don't actually exist. She was never cast. Can you imagine if, like, Rubina just, we watch episode nine, and she's just not there. It's, just, it's like, it's just like, I don't think we would notice in that episode if she wasn't there at all, even though, like, I keep calling out. And then, like, more episodes happen, and, like, she's not there, and eventually we're, everyone on the internet is just like, whatever happened to Rubina? And then we go back and we watch, like, episodes one through seven, and she's just not there. If she was not there, like, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm conspiracy theorist. Like, whatever. I'm not really. But we see the scene. They talk. 
Lisa's campaigning. Again, respectable. I like that she's trying to stay. Angela listens in through the door, and she can hear every single thing that they're saying because the wall is really thin, and she decides to just sit on the bed, and this is where it got awkward because she just sat there, and people started leaving out one by one, and it was just so awkward. And Tucker said something because Tucker is like, I don't know, he's starting to... I'm starting to dislike Tucker some because he just seems kind of cocky, like throwing himself on the block and then uh, calling out Lisa like that to her face, saying that she's lying right to her face, calling out Angela like that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, Tucker's starting to lose some points with me. But he decided to say, Lisa, you can sit there and watch us come out or something like that. And she says something back. And then Lisa walks and Angela mocks it. And this was a big thing online before this episode came out. And they featured in the episode Lisa. And remember, Lisa and Angela did get in a fight that we never saw. Because they didn't feature in an episode uh, argument fight. And they didn't feature in the episode and they didn't show it um, on the live feed because it was blocked. And apparently one of them used the B word. I think it was Angela. But now she decides to call her... Oh, wait, we didn't get to that yet. She mocks her walk. Lisa doesn't say anything. It was it was kind of funny, but, like, this is actually bullying. Like, everyone talked about Lisa bullying someone. This, is, or Angela bullying someone. This is bullying. What she's doing to Aunt, to, oh, my God, these names. What Angela is doing to Lisa, I can classify that as bullying because Lisa's not doing anything back. So, therefore, I will say that that's bullying. Matt, she wasn't just attacking him and attacking him and attacking him when he wasn't, when he was not fighting back. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she did that one blow up, right? With that, it was in front of the house. That was, you know, whatever. Awkward. <laughs> Again, entertaining, but awkward. But he did say stuff back. Then after that, she didn't, like, keep attacking him. At least from what I remember. I don't, know, but I remember. I don't think she did. Uh, but then we see another awkward scene. So our fourth awkward scene in a row. And this time, I guess the house guest got like a laundry delivery, so it was bags, and Tucker was in the shower, and unfortunately we got another bathroom shower scene, I hate these scenes, but uh, she, he screamed, which, oh my god, these walls must really be thin, for someone to bring him his bag, while he was in the bathroom shower. Uh, well, I don't know, I, I'm gonna leave that alone, but... Uh, how they heard him and why he even wanted it, why he couldn't wait, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, Angela brings him his bag. Then Lisa brought him his bag, but it wasn't his bag, which is like these awkward scenes, these awkward situations, these awkward moments. And Angela, of course, says something. She didn't have to, but she says something to Lisa once again. And Lisa this time finally says something back. She calls her a twit, by the way. And she's like, don't call me that. And Angela just went off and just kept saying it. And Lisa went to the storage room and cried in a corner. It probably... Oh, she did say stop bullying me. She mentioned bullying. And Angela was just like, I'm not bullying you. And I know some people think Angela's a production plant. And this is the only time where I thought, okay, maybe. Because I feel like my grandma or any grandma that I know, if someone used that word while they were on TV, like, oh, shoot, maybe I am bullying. Like, maybe, like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I don't mean to come off that way. Like, I feel like you would be more sympathetic if someone really felt that way. And you wouldn't just keep messing with somebody like that, especially being a grandma. I don't mean to, I'm not talking about her as a grandma, but I'm just saying. This is the only time where I feel like, wow, she didn't show no sympathy to that. And uh, Lisa cried in the corner. Some people might say that's dramatic. I can honestly see if she was really like that hurt. I can see that happening because you want to get away from people. But people were inside the storage room. People heard it. Chelsea didn't even know what the twit was. I don't know if I really knew what the twit was. But like Lisa said, either way, it's derogatory. You shouldn't be calling me that, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Well, not blah, blah, blah. But y'all get, get what I'm trying to say. Finally, we get to the actual AI Arena Challenge. It was like a multi-layered puzzle. Of course, it was the nominees competing. Tucker, Lisa, Angela. Tucker won so fast. It wasn't even close. This was ridiculous. It was so funny. But anyway, uh, they come down the stairs and the crowd or the other house guests do cheer again. Like, I feel like if Angela would have won, I would have loved to see if they would have cheered or Lisa, to be honest. But some people in the house do like Lisa. And I like Lisa, like T-Core and like uh, Chemo and even Quinn are fans of Lisa. Like they like Lisa, but like the rest of the house just don't like her. Tucker wins the AI, Julie tells the house Gus or tells Angela and Lisa at least, 
pull people into a room. Like, she's being direct about it, and they still don't do it. They still don't do it. And apparently, Angela thinks she's going home, and Lisa thinks she's staying. We get to the, to the speeches. Angela speech was her screaming and yelling and being super out there and just it was crazy it seemed like she was to be honest drunk but i know she wasn't actually and then lisa did like a more mellow speech and then they voted and only one person voted to keep lisa and that was kenny because kenny hates angela but i feel like more people dislike angela than lisa like some people were regretted it but they like i gotta go with the house which i hate that mentality at least there was one person that was outside the vote but this just confirmed to me that kenny's leaving next and still angela like those two are going on the block no matter what no matter what I think unless each other, those two won HOH, they're going on the block together. So that's two of our three nominees already. Thank God it's three nominees because if it was two, like, this season, if it was two nominees only, this season might be boring. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Well, maybe not because I don't know. Lisa seemed shocked that she got eliminated or evicted. Uh, she looked like she didn't even really want to hug her, anyone, but she did. You know, she was sportsmanship. She showed sportsmanship. She went out the house. Uh, she hugged Julie. She just seemed like she, she seemed like she was trying not to cry. And uh, I feel like she was definitely misunderstood in the house. And she should have caught on that they thought. Like, she made a bad first impression when she interrupted Tucker. And uh, I did end up watching all her goodbye messages and... Some of them were really, really good, where they were like, I didn't want to vote you out. Like, again, Chemo, Quinn, t -Core. And then there were some that just, like, was so mean. Like, she definitely was treated not good in this house. But she was annoying, though. I feel like if she had that one person in the house to tell her, this glitter stuff is not working. You're annoying everybody. Or just let her know, like, I feel like she would have been better and she was a good player. Like, I don't know. I feel bad for her, but that was episode eight. Uh, review is over for the episode. I do want to talk about what I learned since then. It's the new HOH. So spoiler alerts now It is our boy Cedric. So Cedric is the HOH and I, I, I'm, I'm telling y'all it's gonna be C uh, Kenny and Angela guaranteed. I, I, I will be so shocked if he didn't put those two up even I don't know. I, I just feel like it's going to be those two and someone else, and we're about to basically do the same week again. So, but shouts out to Cedric, though, and, and, and uh, Chelsea, because they went from not being able to compete, not being able to play in any competition for a week, to now, oh, my God, and I'm just realizing this. Angela was HOH when that happened. She did not nominate those two when she could have. And now, back-to-back -back weeks, Chelsea and Cedric are HOH, and they're both nominating her. Angela. So I I'm thinking she might regret not well, she hated Matt though, so <laughs> yeah. I was about to say she might regret not putting him on the block, but she hated Matt so much she wanted him him out. But yeah, guys, this week I just feel like it's the same week. So like, I can't really say I'm excited for this week. I mean I guess I'm excited to get this week over with. I like Cedric now, remember in the beginning, he was like one of my I liked everyone, but he was one of my least favorite. But now I like him, and I just, I hope that, I don't know. I just hope we do see something different. Something else, uh, can I just mention, because I don't do live feed updates. I hate that Quinn fumbled the bag with his power. Like, because I feel like he could really made this game. Like, if he would have stuck to his BB Guns alliance, imagine if he, this week, if this week he took, he changed... Cedric's nominations to keep Angela off the block because this is probably when Angela's leaving this one or Kenny Kenny might leave because he keeps talking about wanting to leave so maybe next I don't know I don't know, I'm rambling at this point, guys. But I would love to talk to y'all about this show because I don't have a lot of friends that watch this show like I said in my previous episode review so guys hit me up let's talk about the show and until next time y'all leave this video a like comment subscribe share it on all for our social media I will catch y'all later